Snoop Dogg had the most anticipated debut album in music history with his 1993 release of Doggy Style, the critically acclaimed G-Funk infused masterpiece that made sure Snoop lived up to the hype he had in the early 90s and cemented his place as a hip hop legend. Who are you? Snoop Dogg, the greatest rapper of all time, Nissan LBC. Before the release of Doggy Style, Snoop Dogg had already achieved significant recognition through his collaborations with Dr. Dre, whom he had met at a bachelor party in LA with the help of Dr. Dre's half-brother, Warren G. It was Snoop's smooth delivery and relaxed personality that caught the attention of Dr. Dre and led to both of them collaborating on the iconic 1992 song, Deep Cover. This was the world's introduction to the tall, laid-back Long Beach resident who came straight out of the gate, creeping through the hood with an award-worthy performance on Deep Cover, a song that would establish Snoop Dogg as one of the biggest rising stars in hip-hop and would eventually lead to him signing with one of the hottest record labels ever, Death Row Records. Throughout the rest of 1992, Snoop Dogg, alongside Warren G, Nate Dogg, Daz and Corrupt and the DOC were all invited to collaborate on Dr. Dre's debut solo album, The Chronic. It was at that moment in time that the studio sessions would turn into legendary stories about how that iconic album came to be. And on December 15th, 1992, The Chronic would be released, debuting as the third best album in the world and being certified triple platinum less than one year later. The album eventually became one of the defining hip hop albums of all time. You can also watch the in-depth video I did on Dr. Dre and the Chronic album, where we look at the story behind the album. None of which have kept Dre from having quite a year in musical terms. Here's a look back. 92 just wasn't my year. 93 will be though, you can believe that. Snoop Dogg would go on to effortlessly deliver on the Chronic album, along with Dr. Dre's legendary production. They would not only help popularize the G-Funk sound, but would help revitalize West Coast hip hop and establish it as a dominant force in the rap game. Snoop's storytelling ability, vivid descriptions, and memorable hooks on songs like Nothing But A G Thang and Dre Day arguably propelled him into becoming a major superstar in the music industry. Dr. Dre's importance on Snoop's incredible rise to success cannot be downplayed. Dre had already gained huge credibility for his work with NWA and other acts such as the DOC and JJ Fad, and therefore Snoop Dogg's affiliation with Dre meant that Doggy Star would instantly have an aura of legitimacy and raised expectations to new heights. People who are big fans of yours probably know where the nickname comes from, but uh, tell them where Snoop Doggy Dog comes from. Come from moms. My mama gave me that name, you know what I'm saying? She used to call me Snoopy, you know what I'm saying? But I just put the, the Doggy Dog in there to give it that added flavor, so you know what I'm saying? It can have a twist with it. Yeah, now why did she start calling you Snoopy? I can't tell, probably because I used to look like a dog. <laughs> uh, the younger generation, you know what I'm saying? I try to give an illustration of myself going through the penitentiary showing them, you know what I'm saying? That, this ain't the move, you know what I'm saying? You know, just a little positive side of, of the chronic showing that we ain't just all negative, down and dirty like that, the way they try to roll it. Heading into 1993, Snoop Dogg was constantly on everyone's TVs, whether it was appearing on the Arsenio Hall show or on Yo! MTV Raps at Dr. Dre's pool parties. But it was an incident in August 1993 that would put Snoop in all the major headlines for all the wrong reasons. Snoop and two friends, accompanied by a lawyer, turned themselves into L.A. police to face murder charges in the shooting death of a man named Philip Waldemariam. 
According to the police, Walter Mariam was shot by a passenger in a Jeep on August 25th, a Jeep that was identified as belonging to Snoop, whose given name is Calvin Broadus. An attorney for the rapper says the shooting involves Snoop's bodyguard, the 23-year-old college-educated son of a Chicago policeman named McKinley Lee, and that it was self-defense that Walter Mariam, an ex-convict, had been stalking Snoop and was brandishing a gun at the time of the shooting. Whatever the case, Snoop is expected to be arraigned on October 1st, until which time he's free on $1 million bail so that he can be a part of the Chronic Tour with Dre, Run DMC, and Onyx. Whilst recording the Doggy Star album, Snoop would have this serious case hanging over him, and some may argue that this incident added more credibility to Snoop's lyrics and made his persona appear tougher and more rugged to the mainstream world. One more minute. Uh, what are the biggest misconceptions that we might have read about you? They try to make it like I'm just a, a ruthless uh, gangster, more or less somebody who you, who you can't come up to and say hi, because a lot of people, they come up to me and they say, I want your autograph, but they be scared because they reading what these articles are saying. And I'm like, how you doing? Who am I? And they trip like, I thought you was mean. And I mean, the media twist you up like that. You're the same way they doing Michael Jackson. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's all good. I expect that. Yeah. Dr. Dre would go on to say, it was kind of exciting because the environment was kind of thuggish. Blood's on this side, Crips on the other side, and I'm hearing all these different war stories. I feel like it was something I needed because if I'm producing a record for a particular artist, you have to get into the type of vibe that they're in. So nearing the end of 1993, Snoop Dogg would lay low and keep himself out of the spotlight until it was time to film the music video for his first single, who am I? Who are you? Snoop Dogg, the greatest rapper of all time, Nissan LBC. On November 23rd, 1993, Snoop Dogg released his hotly anticipated debut album, Doggy Style, an album that many critics labeled as one of the most significant albums of the 1990s and went on to achieve a 4 mic rating from Source magazine. Doggy Star would go on to sell 800,000 copies in its first week and debuted as the number one album in the world, firmly placing Snoop as the top dog in the music industry at that moment in time. We're not against rap. We're not against rappers. But we are against those thugs. We also realize that we must provide other channels for them to use these multiple talents they have in a positive and wholesome way. Doggy Style received mixed reviews from important figures in America, such as C. Dolores Tucker, a renowned civil rights activist who criticized the album for its extreme lyrics and accused rappers of glamorizing gang violence and black on black crime. Snoop Dogg gave his meaning behind the album by going on to say mm -hmm. I'm gonna give it to him real I'm not gonna say don't do drugs don't do this don't do that I'm gonna say Snoop Dogg did this Snoop Dogg did that it wasn't nothing nice so, I mean you should peek my knowledge and get up out of it before you you know what I'm saying not blessed with that chance to do it. yeah doggy style had many incredible songs on the album such as the first single who am I what's my name which went as high as number eight on the charts and was certified gold only three months later who Am I showcased Snoop's smooth, laid-back flow and his effortless skills when it came to rhyming. But it was the second single, Gin and Juice, that would go on to become a cultural phenomenon, showing the world how a typical party looked like in Long Beach, California, but again also showcasing Snoop Dogg's smooth delivery and lyrical prowess. Gin and Juice would chart at number 8 on the Billboard Hot 100 and was also nominated for a Grammy and earned Snoop his first VMA award for best rap video. Another classic song of the album was Murder Was The Case, which was a fictitious song about Snoop making a deal with the devil after being hit with a murder charge. And although the song was written way before the August 1993 murder incident, Snoop Dogg mentioned on The Breakfast Club that he felt he manifested the actual murder case that was given to him in real life. Snoop's bodyguard Malik Lee, who actually did the shooting, told Vlad TV, The song validated everything. It made record sales go. It made everything happen for him. It really validated a so-called gangster life. Afterwards, when we went through the trial, the song was already used 
So now the public is putting this with this. Murder was the case would go on to win video of the year at the infamous 1995 Source Awards. What? Wait, 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 wait. The East Coast don't love Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg? The East Coast ain't got no love for Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg and Death Row? Y'all don't love us? Y'all don't love us? Well, let it be known then. We, we know y'all East Coast. We know we at East Coast and... We, the jury in above entitled action, find a defendant, Calvin Brodus, not guilty of the crime of murder in the first degree. After beating his murder charge, Snoop would be reunited with Tupac after first meeting each other in 1993 at the rap party for Poetic Justice. Snoop says, On that night, Tupac passed me my first blunt. Yes, that's right. Tupac is the one that got Snoop Dogg smoking blunts. I was a zigzag man before that. Shit. We became very good friends quickly thereafter. And then in 1995, I told Suge Knight that he should get Tupac out of prison and have him come join our team over at Death Row Records. You know, the most unfuckwittable record label of all time. Snoop and Park eventually positioned themselves as arguably the biggest rappers in the world. Before Tupac's untimely death, both rappers would collaborate on a few legendary songs, such as Two of America's Most Wanted and All About You, again showcasing the West Coast stronghold in the rap game during the early to mid 90s. Snoop Dogg's Doggy Star remains one of the most anticipated and influential debut albums in the history of hip hop. The combination of Snoop's unique flow and persona his highly publicised legal cases and Dr Dre's masterful production all play significant roles in creating a buzz and anticipation that hadn't been seen before for an artist who had never released his own music. Kendrick Lamar told XXL magazine, there wouldn't be a Kendrick Lamar without Doggy Style. Albums that last long have their own sound. It was nothing duplicated. That's why it stood out. It was that G-Funk. Albumism, an online magazine, has gone on to say Doggy Style lived up to its hype creatively and commercially. It's no easy feat to have millions of hip hop fans expect an artist to deliver something truly special. But Snoop rose to the challenge and made himself a legend in the process. I only had it in Long Beach right now as far as me doing something for the community because that's where my heart lies at as far as straightening out my own neighborhood before I go elsewhere. That's how I do it. I'm a respectable citizen of Long Beach, so I'm going to take care of Long Beach first. And then once I get Long Beach situated as far as having it to where it's peace and there's opportunity and jobs and we got labels and we got new acts coming out, then I could groove on over to the next spot where it's popping.